Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a table. So a table stores data. So what sort of table am I going to create? Well, what I'm going to do, I've got some previously created data here. And this is a purchase system. So in my purchase number one, I bought four of product number one at a cost of $50.26 totaling $201.04. In my purchase order two, then I bought three numbers 359 and three of 360s and so forth. So a perfectly ordinary transaction table. So I'm going to create it. I'm going to leave it on screen so we can have a look at it while we create the table. So to create the table, I'm going to right and click on tables and go new table. Again, there's an awful lot of detail that we couldn't look at, but we're just going to look at very simplistic, very easy to create things. So click new table. And here it says, well, what columns are you going to create? So I want a column called purchase order ID. And I want another one called order quantity. I want product ID, unit price, and line total. Now there is another thing that we have to specify at the same time. What type of column is this? Or more accurately, what sort of data do we want to store in the column? Now you can see that we've got various choices including dates, time, Text, though in reality the one that I use the most of the time is called a varchar, a variable character. And then we've got things like integer. Integers are whole numbers like one, two, three, instead of one and a half. So this is when we really need to look at the data that we've got and decide what sort of column we want. And hopefully you can see that the first three columns can all be integers. They're all whole numbers. So let's change them to ints, int. Now these last two contain, well, money essentially. And so what I'm going to do is int would not be good enough because if I put $50.26 into an int column, then it will truncate it to $50. So I would have a certain lack of accuracy. So instead, what I'm going to do with all of these is I'm going to put it into the money data type. There are many other different types I could use, but just for now, we're going to use int for integers and money for floating point numbers. So now I've created it, I'll press, well, what do I do? Well, I can press the save table here or I can close this window. So let's click save. Either way, we'll get this choose a name. So what name am I going to call this? I'm going to call this transactions. So click OK and close this. And we'll go back to our object explorer and you can see that the transactions table is where exactly? Now, one of the things about Object Explorer is that it doesn't automatically update after you have created a new object. The only exception for this is a database that you have created or attached. So if you've created a new object, be this a table, a view, a procedure or anything else, and you want it to appear, then we need to click on the refresh icon. So now we can see that we have our transactions table. DBO database owner dot transactions. Every table will have something before this dot and that is called a schema. But in this case, it doesn't really matter what the schema is. So in the next video, we're going to populate it. We're going to add some data to this table and then we're going to retrieve it.